pleasure it is to welcome Sarah Lewis and Haley Lewis. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. Mother and daughter mm -hmm. that make music in a great way. I've been listening to them uh, now and looking forward to your playing some music. But let's start off with some questions that you uh, may answer. First of all, Sarah, uh, did you start, how did you start playing the cello? Uh, I started playing the violin first. Oh. Um, when, uh, in my day, you could miss a class if you decided to sign up for music. And I wanted to sign up. <laughs> so we had um, a music teacher come to the school, and the school owned a lot of instruments back then. And so I started the violin. Um, the next year, um, when I came into the classroom, my best friend had a cello in front of her, not a violin. And I thought, oh, I'm highly influenced by social interactions. <laughs> so I said, oh, can I play the cello too? So that's how you. That's how I started friendship. playing the cello. <laughs> it's friendship. Um, and I wanted to play every instrument there, every instrument there was. In fact, I, I started at age three, the piano. Always sang in the church choir. Um, so after the cello, I, I played the recorder oh. as soon as I could. My dad and I would play Elizabethan uh, music on the recorder together. Um, and then it was the flute, the bassoon, the classical guitar, and you know, I credit my parents for letting me take lessons on any instrument that I wanted. Wow. So what a, I. <laughs> what a wealth of music you must have had. Well, um, I, I think it was very appreciated in, in the household. My mom played the piano, um, and so I, heard, I, I grew up hearing her practice a lot, mm -hmm. and um, my dad was a tenor. So um, we often had music howls in the house where we would all <laughs> sing around the piano. and uh, With friends and relatives? Or? With yeah. friends. My, my dad was a professor, so he would invite his professor friends over, and then and we would perform some Schubert leader, and then we would oh. all sing around the, <laughs> Sounds like sing fun. Around the piano. What a great way to, to be yes, introduced I'm, to music. I'm grateful that I had and, that opportunity. Uh, Haley, did, did you go to uh, school for music? So I actually didn't. Um, I went to school for psychology, more specifically clinical counseling psychology. Um, I think there was a part of me, though I had a huge interest in it in high school, um, that didn't think I was cut out for it, um, the whole performance and music making business. So I sort of kept it as a hobby, and so I did acapella in college for um, the whole four years that I was there. Um, but I focused my studies on psychology that I still have a huge passion for. So. And I think I've heard some, in your song you composed, some elements of that psychology right. that you've learned. Yeah, I think what's really fun when I have these two passions is that I can find ways to combine them, right? So yes. I, I can write things in my songs that give messages about mental health. And I can also uh, write music to be used as music therapy. Um, in my day treatment setting that I work in as well. So that's really cool too. Cool. Now, uh, Sarah, what, what have you been doing this summer? Well, I uh, have a little bit of a, a new hobby. Um, What's that? Well, my new hobby is making connections for my singer-songwriter <laughs> <laughs> daughter. And she went into the studio um, because her parents begged her to, to take her composition to the next level. And, and so we went into the studio and produced four songs, which I guess we call an EP, extended play. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and unfortunately, I wasn't be able to bring a cello with me, but I wanted her to you know, explore this, this new music venture you know, with, with her own product. And, um, so I, I said, you know, it, it came out very, very professional and, and really, really wonderful and to listen this? to. Um, we, uh, through Friends of Friends, we recorded in Phoenixville, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And um, with, with help of some, some longstanding um, musicians in, in the 
in the field of producing and, and performing. Mm -hmm. Good. And we just, we had such a good time. I, I said, Haley, you know, I know you're getting a degree in psychology, but what would you think about, you know, wanting to perform more, you know, when you come home from college? And she said yes, so I started right away contacting everybody I knew who, who was even crossover from, because I'm mostly classical with the St. Paul Chamber Orchestra, but I've gotten to know a few people in town and I reached out and trying to learn the business of, of sort of starting up again. And um, so I got her a few shows and we got some musicians to play with her and um, I sort of followed her around all of June um, to farmers markets um, and uh, small venues uh, in the Twin Cities and uh, to give her a taste of sort of that fun live music mm -hmm. atmosphere. So that, that was kind of one of my hobbies this yeah. summer. It, uh, and w what do you see in your future now, Haley? So like she said, I've been doing a lot of performing around the Twin Cities. I've been doing performances at farmer's markets most recently, but I did have some nice gigs at the Poor House and Acadia, um, which are just locations in Minneapolis. But what I'm really interested in, I think this comes from the way that I felt when I was in the recording studio. And I think all musicians feel like this. It's very, very cool to be in the recording studio and to see all the fancy gadgets and get to mess around with all the parts. And that's something that I'm really interested in and so my next venture is I'm really thinking about how can I self-produce? How can I make songs and start to release more content for my viewers just from home rather than having to fly to Pennsylvania every time I want to produce something and have to pay money to do so? Um, I'd rather sort of invest my time in figuring out the programs needed to self-produce songs. Good for you. Yeah. I bet you'll even find some friends here that can help you self-produce. Yeah, I think so. I think you're right. <laughs> so... Yeah, and uh, c could we hear one of your songs now? Uh, um, <clears throat> do you want to? Uh, I was going to start off with um, something that I've been working on this summer. Um, it's a movement from a, a very fiery Spanish uh, suite by Gaspar Casado. Oh, can um, we dance the. Uh, I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> but well, maybe, maybe you, can you? <laughs> Ooh, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> um, so many elements in this music remind me um, that as as a classical musician, we <clears throat> trained to be bound by what is on the page, yes. and part of um, learning about what my daughter does is learning about what's not on the page and what is inspired by um, improvisation. Um, Mm -hmm. The orchestra played a piece by uh, Tashan Sori last year, and it required members of the orchestra to improvise. And when talking to some of the musicians, they were um, at first quite uncomfortable with making things up. You know, something that she does with her music, she makes, makes things up mm -hmm. out of inspiration. Um, what this piece... Um, teaches me a little bit of how to get out of um, my sort of regimented uh, I will only play what's on the page and it's very uncomfortable for for train me as a trained musician to to improvise even though the you know the box suites where there's a lot of impro improvisation that can be done so in the box suites imp improvising I will not however oh. However, I will be improvising somewhat when we play the, the piece with Haley. Oh, good. And I, yeah. and I just thought, since I was working on this, and it... Um, yeah, let's hear that now. Yeah, maybe it'll inspire us even further. Mm -hmm. This is the prelude from uh, Sweet by Gaspar Casado. <laughs> Thank you. 
Wow. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Never gets old. <laughs> yeah. I've been to Spain. Feeling inspired. <laughs> and seen flamenco dancing. Yeah. And I think he was inspired by some flamenco dancers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One, one flamenco dancer even invited me to come up on stage and dance with her. Wow. <laughs> what an experience. Mm -hmm. Wow. Did she teach you some moves? <laughs> oh, I think I taught her some. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you did. So, great. oh, that was great. Mm -hmm. Gustav Casado, sweet, the sweet, and that was just the uh, prelude. Just the prelude. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, he derived a lot of his material from folk elements. And in the next movements, which I'm still working on <laughs> learning, <laughs> um, there, there's just a lot of like peasant dancing and mm. raucous, you know, um, regular people <laughs> like us. Yeah. And um, you know, when I think of folk music, you know, I think of um, you know people just sitting by the fire or you know in their everyday lives singing music. And I, I will tell you, I do s walk around singing her music, so I think her music is kind of folk, has no. folk elements in them, mm -hmm. in them too. Good. And uh, what kind of cello is this that you play? It oh, sounds special. Um, it is a, a very long story. Um, once upon a time, I uh, borrowed some money from my grandmother to, to buy a cello. And I bought a cello right out of grad school, and I, um, I used it for a long time, but um, it, uh, it wasn't quite enough like the volume of it. And I researched and, and went to many uh, luthiers and, and, and shops looking for a great cello. And you know, we have this choice between, oh, get an old Italian <laughs> and uh, you know, pay many, many thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars. And um, you know, I, I chose to, to um, a different route. I wanted, I wanted something that was mine and that I uh, ended up meeting a, uh, a, a man who only made cellos. And uh, his name is Christopher Dungy. And he made uh, this beautiful cello for me in um, 97 or 96. And he inscribed my name in the label. And it, it, was, it, felt, it was very precious to yes. me to own this cello. But after a few years, I realized it was, it, it was big. It was a bigger model, like a Montagnana model. And, and I'm, not that, yeah. I'm not that big. I'm 5'4", and my arms aren't that long. So I was overreaching to play said instrument. And it was many years until like, I was done raising kids, and um, I, I decided, well, I wonder if he would make a smaller cello for me. And so I looked into it, and, and then this one was born. <laughs> and it was, it was born a year ago, and it also has um, a label that says, made for Sarah Lewis. Good. So this mm -hmm. is, this is the oh. ba a baby of a cello, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. and hopefully it will, it will only get better with, with age, as Good. we all do, right? <laughs> yeah, someday it'll be selling for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Ah. Hey, hopefully. <laughs> That'd be nice. That'd be great. So, oh, that, and uh, uh, what was your inspiration for your compositions, Haley? Right. Um, I would say that it, there's a two-part answer. Because um, the way that I think about my writing, there's two parts. There's the noodling around on the piano, and then there's the actual writing of the lyrics. Um, so sometimes I started off by, wow, I have this thing happening in my life, and it's really bugging me, and I need you know some cathartic way to deal with it. And so I start to try and get my thoughts to be concise and write them into lyric form. Um, but then the other part, sometimes I'm just, you know, messing around on the keys and I do some combination that sounds cool and I'm like, hey, what can I do with that? And then I'll combine the two depending on um, what the, I guess, the theme of the piano composition is. And uh, you told me earlier what was the message, sort of the essence of, right. of the one you're 
be playing. Yeah, so the moment is the one that we're going to be playing today together. Um, and that was actually, I think it was one of the like third songs that I ever wrote. Um, so it's a pretty old one. how many have one. you written? I think I've written, I've fully finished around 12. And I have a whole bunch of them that are sort of sitting in my computer waiting to be fully fleshed out. Um, yeah. But about 12 of them that I've completely finished and that I've, I feel like, yes, it has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Um, but a lot of them are sitting around that have a beginning or maybe they have a little bit of a middle and an end, but they don't have a beginning. Um, and I'm, I'm sort of trying to chip away at those every day as much as I can. On, on this particular song, mm -hmm. the, the, mo the Moment right. by Corzine. Right. So Corzine is my stage Cor name. Yeah. Um, and it, it comes from my grandma's maiden name. She just passed away um, last year. And she was, like my mom said, a huge inspiration in terms of the musical side and the creative side. And so it was sort of taking her name was a way to honor her. And I think it just kind of sounds cool. <laughs> yes, it does. Yeah. And you both got tattoos to show We sure it. do, yeah. You oh, know, look at that. She was a, a huge supporter and a, a cheerleader for, you know, for me. And, you know, it's hard to, hard to be leave home when you're 18 and then and never return and then you know chart chart a course in the in the music world and, and she did that and she did she helped me do that i mean mostly oh, by helped you do that yeah, yeah she helped me do that mostly by leaving me alone <laughs> she, <laughs> she let me be independent and i i just wanted to remind myself of her every day mm -hmm. and i had a um a beautiful artist work mm -hmm. a, a bee which was her? Oh, oh yes, I see which was her insignia on a lot of her um, art. She was mm -hmm. an artist as well as a pianist, and she loved sunflowers. And uh, so I recently had a, so a sunflower. So this is modeled after so her this is, art. Mm -hmm. This is art, and this is art, and you know, collaboration <laughs> is mm -hmm. beautiful. Is the name, right? So, uh, uh, do you want to play now? Do, yeah. Do you want to mm -hmm. answer another question? Let's, let's play. It. Yeah, and let's go we'll ahead and play it. Have time for questions? After? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. We've only got five minutes left. So. Yeah. Oh, my okay. goodness. <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Working together is to make such beauty. That is. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I think the, the how funniest part. How did part this collaboration between the two, uh, with your mother, Haley, uh, come together? Right. Well, I was going to say it's funny because we pulled this together in just a couple days. <laughs> um, but, you know, I think. Part of it came from, I have one of the songs that's on my EP called France Avenue. And that one is a very piano heavy ballad. And it was one that my mom and I were really interested in doing some cello parts or adding some cello parts to. But when it came to the recording, we just couldn't get it to all fall into place. Um, so we were sort of toying with that idea early on in performing. Um, but we sort of, I think, needed a push to put it all together. And so this gave us a wonderful opportunity to be able to say, all right, we're going to sit down and we're going to write something together and we're going to make it happen. Somewhere along the way, I think people have inspired me to try. And it, it's very hard. You have to make some interesting decisions. I'm, I'm not a jazz player, but <laughs> I, I uh, you know, we wrote the chords down and, and mm -hmm. I jotted down some some ideas and some of them are good and some of them are experimental mm -hmm. but right um i'm glad she let me play <laughs> yeah well and it's it's tough because i don't really know how the cello works so i can come up with tunes in my head but it might not work with the fingering or chord yeah. progressions that make sense but i think we're done i think we, we are done <laughs> good all righty went by fast yeah it really did